Hello and welcome to Radical Catholic. I'm your host, Shoeless Joe, and today we are talking about how to prepare for Easter. Holiness is what I need. Okay, so now we're into Holy Week. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Lent has almost come to a close. It can be tempting in this final week before Easter to start getting out the Easter decorations and decorating and all that, but don't do it. Do not do it. The closer we get to Easter means the closer we're getting to Jesus' death, so Lent needs to become more and more solemn as we approach Easter. I would strongly suggest going to the Holy Week services at your parish. Now I know it sounds like a lot, like a big time commitment, and they're not holy days of obligation, but trust me, it is worth it. The whole point of Lent is building up to Christ's passion and resurrection, and Holy Week is a great time to really enter in. On Sunday, we celebrated Palm Sunday, the time when Jesus entered in and he was praised and honored, and we received palms that have been blessed to remember this. Then on Holy Thursday, we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, the time when he broke bread and instituted the Eucharist. This is when it happened. This is the night when he took his disciples and broke the bread. And many parishes practice the ritual of the washing of feet. Where just as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, the priest washes the feet of different people in the parish. This is a beautiful ceremony and I highly recommend going if you've never been. Then at the end of Mass, Jesus is taken out of the church. The Blessed Sacrament is moved to a different location. And then there is a time of adoration where you can pray right in front of the Blessed Sacrament. This is symbolic of Jesus going out to the Mount of Olives and his disciples going with him. So as the Blessed Sacrament leaves the church, we follow and worship. Then on Good Friday, we have a service that is around 3 p.m. because that's traditionally when it has been believed that Jesus died. Now this is not a Mass, so there is Holy Communion. What this means is that the Blessed Sacrament is taken from the tabernacle instead of transubstantiated through the priest. This service is unique not only in the fact that it's not an actual Mass, but also in the fact that we venerate the cross. There's a beautiful ceremony where the priest brings in a wooden cross and all of the parishioners come up and venerate it, meaning you give it a kiss or touch it or something like that. And then when the service is done, it ends in silence because now Jesus has died. It's really a powerful and moving experience. I suggest going if you never have. And remember, Good Friday is a day of fasting, which means one main meal, two smaller meals, and no meat. Then we have the Easter Vigil Mass Saturday night. Now while it is a vigil mass, meaning that it fulfills the Sunday obligation, it is not going to be the same as if you go on Sunday morning. And there's definitely nothing wrong with going to the Easter Sunday Mass instead of the vigil, but the vigil is a completely different experience. The Easter vigil starts outside with fire. And you know it's going to be awesome if it starts with fire. And the whole church was dark, just as the church back then was at its darkest point after Jesus had died and before he had risen. Everyone gets a candle, so as we process in, we light the candles and the lights come on in the church just as the light of Christ enters the world. This is such a great ritual because as physical beings, we need to see this kind of symbolism to really appreciate it. And often at the Vigil Mass, if there's people entering the church, they will be baptized at this Mass. This is such a beautiful and powerful witness because often these are people who are converting from other religions or never had a religion at all. So to see them say yes to Christ, to say yes to the church, and freely choose to enter in is really powerful. The readings of the Easter Vigil are really great too. While there are a lot of them and it makes Mass go longer, it's worth it because they start all the way back in the Old Testament and bring us up, pretty much tell snapshots of the whole salvation story. Bringing us all the way from the creation to the Word made flesh to His resurrection. So as we go into Holy Week, I strongly encourage you to prayerfully consider attending as many of these services as possible. Jesus' death and resurrection is the whole point of why he came, and it's important for us to fully enter into the passion and his story as much as we can. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite part of Holy Week is. Thank you so much for watching. Many blessings. And remember, if you're not praying, you're straying. Good Friday, Friday, gotta eat fish on Friday. Everybody's sorry, and now they're Christians. Good Friday, Friday. If you're not praying, you're straying. Whoa. So, I, so as we go, and bring us all the way to the Easter, to the Easter, because we are physical beings. So seeing symbolicness, like symbolicness, really. When Jesus came in and he was praised among all, praised among all. When Jesus came into the town and he was praised and, oh, Easter, and this is the time when you can really be worth it. It is completely worth it to go on the dead.
Mm. 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 Seriously? 